Kirby has become so popular and beloved all over the years because of how simple and adaptable they are. How has put our favorite Pink Puff in so many situations and changed their appearance so many times that whenever a new game releases, it's, it's jarring if it doesn't include a new twist. Many people actually prefer these wacky spin-offs to their mainline games for a variety of reasons. While most of these are cherished by the community, there is one game that quickly got forgotten and left behind, and is still one of the few Kirby games that not many people talk about despite being released not that long ago. Hello everyone, it's me, Savvy, and today we'll be taking a look back at the unfortunate nature of one of the most fun Kirby games in recent memory, and how the sweet, bite-sized treat fell into obscurity not longer after release. Let's talk Kirby's Dream Buffet. Kirby's Dream Buffet was already first shown to the world in a very weird manner, with a trailer dropping out of nowhere in the middle of July. We wouldn't have to wait long though, as the game would be available just one month later. Dream Buffet is a racing game with battle royale elements, where four Kirbys are dropped into a racetrack where they have to collect as many strawberries as possible to win. The game is divided into three sections. These races, short sections where the players are thrown into a small arena to get a few more berries, and a final round where Chaos Alicia says everyone will have to battle not only to collect even more fruit, but steal some of them from other contestants as well. The formula was quite simple, and yet, as almost every Kirby game does, it includes an extra layer of strategy that comes into play when taking into consideration a few extra factors. Said strategy and death is what make this game so fun for me at launch. You can prioritize going faster during the big K at the end that will guarantee you a higher score, or you could go slower but collect some of the other rare berries that come in your way. That could play a role at the end of the round, where the game rewards its players with random bonuses. These bonuses are never purely skill based though, as some of them are something like time spent floating, meaning that even the players in this advantage might gain some extra points at the end of the round. You can risk going through a narrow pathway to be ahead of everyone else, but that can turn into a massive slowdown if you don't pay enough attention. You can use certain copy abilities to actually pass through these narrow pathways, but that means giving up a potential offensive item or a speed boost. The courses are even filled with these cookie walls that make so that the players who need to catch up have a chance to do so, but one of the new food copy abilities, the jelly, can make so that everyone can go through these barriers or even leave jelly that will slow down other players. Something very fun about these copy abilities is that each and every one of them has two different moves. One by pressing the button once and one by doing it twice. Stone can hold for extra time, which can prove to be a double-edged sword in Battle Royales if you're first place, because that means staying still and having a chance of getting attacked by the hands. Master Hand and Crazy Hand will be there for the whole segment and will drop strawberries on the players in last place and will attack the player in first. Other cool alternative attacks you can do with these food copy abilities includes being able to drift with the wheel, change direction with the needle, and even be able to direct your attack with high jump. This game has such genius design that even the only waiting room features different objects that the player can interact with, such as some gummy waddle dees or some cups where you can practice your momentum. My favorite set piece though has to be the slice of cake that isn't very big but makes it that the players feel enticed to climb and stay atop of said slice, thus learning precise movement. It's the small things like these that make the game so addicting. And speaking of addicting, this game has an insanely well-crafted unlocking system, as every time you play, you're almost guaranteed to unlock something every single round you finish. As the game will reward you with these treats, which are purely cosmetic. There's 256 of them to unlock, and they come from all sorts of Kirby media, like the anniversaries, concerts, and even the Kirby Cafe. On top of all that, you can unlock new maps, costumes, and colors for your characters. All of the maps in the game also have a few slightly different variations that can play during a match, which definitely makes things more interesting, although I wish there was a way to choose these during a match. You will be able to practice in a training area, which includes all types of terrains and obstacles in game, which is pretty nice. The music in this game is actually insanely good. Apart from the copies of mine of original songs, it also features a shocking selection of remixes and songs pulled from the games themselves. Like, listen to how good this is.
So Dream Buffet was replayable, had a lot of charm, was in depth, so... Why didn't Jets die then? The reasons could be a few. First off, the game just didn't have enough content instead of the few maps and collectibles. By simply having the game update, it would have had a longer legacy. This game also had the sad fate of being sandwiched between a groundbreaking jump to the third dimension and a great remake of a fan favorite, so Hot's priority was definitely moving on with these bigger projects. If the game had a smaller team dedicated to it, after its release, every once in a while, just adding some new maps, colors, costumes, music tracks, sort of giving people the incentive to come back for the game and test out these new things. The game had a very solid foundation, so I'm sure it would have benefited from more single-player content too. I tried couch co-op with a friend and it was the bare minimum the game could have done. It wasn't bad, just a bare-bones split-screen multiplayer. The game could have definitely profited from having a time travels mode of sorts, where you could select some courses and compare your times. Hell, even something as simple as being able to select which map you get to play in single-player would have been nice. So I went around on Twitter and asked everyone what they personally thought about this game, as I know I'm definitely biased. And the replies agreed with some of the points I just said, but provided some other ones. First of all, the game should have been free. By being free in live service, it would have helped the game stay alive, as more people would have been drawn to play this game by being more accessible, and the game would have remained fresh with a few more updates. Number 2, the fact that this game had no shit to do if you didn't have an NSO subscription. Which is super true by the way, the game has split screen multiplayer, and as I said, it's bad. Something like challenges or somehow not making any sort required might have made the game even more accessible. Number 3, the game just didn't have enough variety, not enough modes, and the game for some just gets too repetitive. Funnily enough, while scripting this video, a new point was brought up by Astro, a close friend of mine who is also responsible behind the Znazi new thumbnail template. They told me that one of their biggest problems with the game was the physics and controls. Dream of Face controls take a while to get used to, and overall it has very weird physics. Like, check out this clip. This Kirby gains velocity by going uphill, which is already pretty strange, but I mean, this game has just some pretty funny moments like that. You may call it bullshit, I call it Kirby's Dream of Faith. I have to admit that I probably love this game so much, because it came at a moment of my life where everything was in fucking shambles and I've been going downhill, and I slowly started to get myself back up, and the fact that I met so many wonderful people that now are my closest friends, and overall became a better person, is probably the reason as why I love this game so much. Well, it's a shame it died then. Can't really do much about it, since no one will really give it a second chance. What if I do that myself? That's right, fellas. This is unscripted. You can tell. The tone shift of the video is absolutely insane. A Kirby's Dream Buffet tournament. I don't think it's ever been done before on an official level. This is not official at all, so like, uh, who cares? It's gonna be many creators, 16 of them in fact, plus one who will be a special commentator. I was planning on showing them, like, all of them right now, but uh, the thing is that maybe some people will not be able to join for the... So I don't really want to, you know... Hype you guys up for someone who may not be in the thing at the end. Uh, expect some familiar faces, some new faces, or all friends and creators I haven't collabed with in the past, which is fun. So please, 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 please look forward to this. Uh, I love Kirby's Dream Buffet. At the time of recording this, I literally did Kirby Dream Buffet propaganda. Um, it's uh, Seesaw. Um, a body of mine is doing a spin off thing. And like, Dream Buffet is winning against Air Ride, which is insane. Take that, Air Ride fans. Your game is genuinely better, but does it have an emotional attachment? I, I don't, I don't even think so. But yeah, that was the video. That was a bit silly, but I cannot wait for you guys to join me on this tournament, which will be absolute bonkers. And I will see you there. Now, yeah, I will literally see you there. Savvy out. Thank you.